What is it that is always eternal? Is it wealth? Is it power? Or perhaps reputation? Those are things we strive for, but they never truly stand the test of time. However, there is one thing that is always timeless, and that is knowledge. And you may be asking yourself, well, how do we go acquiring that knowledge? We're innately curious when it comes to truly understanding the world around us, but we'll always possess a sense of ambition for exploring the unknown. This is driven by one simple code to evolve, thrive and survive. Failure is knowledge and knowledge is success. We've always thought that failure was the opposite of success, but what if I could take the time today to tell you failure can be beautiful. Once quoted by Winston Churchill, success is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. From every failure, we improve. From every failure, we learn from our mistakes. And from every failure, we reach the ultimate conclusion that failure is part of the journey. Our history classes never taught us about the failures of life's greatest sport leagues, thinkers, or businesses. Instead, they only, they only taught us the achievements these people have achieved, the success these people have achieved. Sorry. Society, on the other hand, tells us, if you have a dream, you must go out and chase it. And if you do, you're guaranteed to get it. What it never mentions are the failures you might stumble upon. Or what it, what it also doesn't mention are the conditions that come along with them too. Conditions like a policy standing in your way or a competitor. I want everybody here to take a couple of seconds to think what they wanted to be when they were six years old. Possibly an astronaut, a lawyer, or a doctor. Now, think of when you're in your teenage years or adulthood. Is what you wanted as a child now become a reality? Or has it come a reality? And if so, what obstacles did you have to overcome? And if not, was it failure that made you fail? During my early, oh, sorry, looking back at my early years of childhood, I could say I had three major failures, which were my ability to succeed academically, which were my issues paying attention in class, my antisocial habit that I let consume in my early years of elementary school, and finally, my time management skill. With all these being combined, by the fifth grade, I'd given up on the dream of one day working in the medical field. Because I, because I thought, if I was going to be a failure now, how would it be like in a couple of years? Then, after I realized what was putting me down, I, res I resolved I resolved all three issues. I no longer face issues focusing in class, of course, if my friends and I have a gossip session. I no longer have trouble fitting into so different social groups, and I manage my time better than I ever have. I got, I got back on dreaming of one day working in the medical field because I had set a path on achieving that dream by finishing what was putting me down. We aren't bound by our failures, but we do strive to overcome them. Failure doesn't only happen to big organizations like NASA or Pepsi. Entrepreneurs have also had their fair share. For instance, Sir James Dyson failed exactly 5,126 times, building his prototype of a bagless vacuum, eventually leading him to a net worth of $4.5 billion. Michael Jordan was cut from the school basketball team. Warren Buffett was rejected by Harvard University and Richard Brant Branson was a high school dropout. It never, mattered, it never mattered how many times you failed in your past. What truly and really matters is how many times you get up to turn that failure into success in your future. During the journey of life, we will face many impediments, no matter what, what they might be. These obstacles will put you down, but it's always up to you whether you choose to, to, con to continue to fall or get up and try harder again. Not too long ago, I had stumbled upon Michelle Obama's last commencement speech. In her speech, it highlighted the various political and social issues our world is facing today. Her speech was exceptionally more to the educational and inspirational side. But there was one part of the speech that really stood out to me, because it applies to the failures we have and will face in our everyday lives. You should never view your challenges as a disadvantage, quoted the First Lady. Instead, it's important for you to understand that you're that your experience facing and overcoming adversity is your biggest advantage. You may be thinking to yourself, what a great quote, right? The problem with this is that it's easy in theory, but a lot more challenging, a lot more challenging in practice. 
But with those two being said, it never made it less true. Think of it like this. You have a job and you work really hard at it. You extend your hours and even stay on weekends to complete your work. You're the first person in and the last person out. Then one day your employer calls you in and without any knowledge or valid reason, lays you off. That very moment, you think of yourself as the world's biggest failure and you could never possibly succeed in your career. Does that sound like you? Possibly not in a workplace, but maybe failing academically or something or a failed relationship. Sadly, we're all guilty of thinking of ourselves as failures at some point of our lives. But just remember, failure is delay, not defeat. It only sets us back from where we began. You see, from all the failures you and I experience, that gave us knowledge. Despite any policy or any competitor, on the path to your dream and the path you select out of many, failure, sorry, success can be hidden in a place you least expect it to. Failure with, w is and will always be part of chasing your dreams. Failure will happen to you and success will always be built on a mountain of failures. That's what makes it so beautiful. Failure can be a gateway to achieving greatness. So why make it stop you? Thank you.